social media can make or break your career before it even starts. You know, if you tweet the wrong the wrong thing or if you post in a little uh, too raunchy for depending on who you're working with. Um, and especially as a student athlete, you're a representative and an ambassador of your community, your school, your alumni. So it's important to represent yourself to the best of your abilities. So I would say, you know, social media branding is very important. And like, if you're not supposed to care what people think, but you still want to present yourself in the right way and present yourself in the way where people can't make assumptions about what you want your character to be. You put that out there, you control that. So control your narrative, control your story, control your brand, and you'll be better for it in the long run. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and uh, we have another exciting guest this week. And we have none other, uh, th this gentleman here, he is the founder of A Frugal Athlete, and he's also a professional soccer player. And he, he's helping uh, student athletes as well as professional athletes all across the globe uh, get their finances tight, understand this This uh, it, it seems like a, a giant movement uh, of what is financial literacy. We have none other than Mr. Amobi Akugo. How we doing, hey. brother? No, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time coming, so glad to finally connect. Yeah, man, we we, we made it happen. We we, we got it going, uh, man. But how like how are you in? The, how how how's your mental state right now? Just with you know seeing what our world's looking like with with COVID nineteen and you know, just seeing what's happening with just the, the, the racial injustice. But what, what's your mental health state looking like right now? To be, to be completely honest, my mental health state is fairly good. I mean, I was able to go back home and just to have to, to be with my family um, during this break and have that reset. And, you know, everyone in my family is, you know, healthy. Um, so from that standpoint, from a selfish standpoint, you know, my, my mental health is good. Um, from a uh, outside looking in though, mm -hmm. you know, it's been tough to see, you know, some fan, some, some friends and some people that I know um, suffer from the likes of COVID. And then obviously mm -hmm. with the racial injustice that's been going on, um, as unfortunate as it is, um, I feel like this was the breaking point that we needed as a nation to finally, to finally not just like, talk about it for a moment, but actually make a movement. So um, definitely prayers up to the people that have unfortunately left us because of what has happened. Um, but now is, the, now is the right time to really come together and make some active change. Definitely, definitely. So you say you, so you, say you got the opportunity to go home. So where is home for you? Yeah, so home base is Sacramento, California. Um, mm. I currently play in Austin, Texas, but because we, our season was suspended for uh, since March till now, uh, mm. I was able to go back home. It was only supposed to be for a month, but then it kept getting extended because the, the suspension was longer and longer, and there was no reason for me to be back here. So I was literally back in SAC, working out with my brothers, working on a frugal athlete, eating, eating the home-cooked food, taking advantage of that. Um, but now it's back back to the grind yeah man yeah so i haven't had the opportunity to, go, to be to california just yet I, I mean i've been to california but not sacramento i've been to san diego but i might, I might need to uh might need to add that add that to the list yeah. right? you're not sure. really missing out you're not missing too much <laughs> I mean, it's the capital but to be honest it's a growing city like five ten years from now i'll say yeah you got to come through the sack but it's a more family-oriented city uh similar to how can i compare it? like a smaller version of austin Mm. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. But there's a, there's a little there's a little bit more stuff to do in Austin from like an outdoor perspective. Uh, but Sacramento is close to Lake Tahoe, close to San Francisco. So uh, yeah, give it five, ten more years, then Sacramento is gonna be like a hot spot. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So so talk a little bit about your upbringing because you you said you said home base for you is, is California. Uh, but but just, but just talk a little bit about your upbringing because like we said, you know, you're you're professional professional athlete. And, and now you're helping other athletes, student athletes and professionals as well, 
uh, in regards to financial literacy, but like, was this something that was instilled at a young age or this was something, or how'd you come about this? Yeah, so in the essence of starting business, I've always been interested in business and finance. Uh, I grew up first generation Nigerian American, uh, born and raised in California. Had the fortunate pleasure of being able to travel um, a lot as a young at a young age because of uh, my ability on the soccer field. So being exposed to different cultures, different environments, uh, different opportunities really kind of opened my mind to you know, a bunch of different things, but it wasn't really until I actually went pro where I, you know, wanted to like actually expand on, you know, doing something from the business standpoint. You know, I've always been a connector in the sense of like helping people or connecting with different people from all walks of life, uh, not only through soccer, um, but basketball and just the schools that I went to and just the, just the way my parents raised me, you know, they didn't want us to just be, you know, pigeonholed into one community or one subject or one environment. So that ability to connect with so many different people um, has helped me um, today. And it's really helped me blossom in some of the endeavors that I'm doing. Yeah, I've definitely seen that you are a real, real connector and you, you, you find ways to, to connect with people. I don't want to say that aren't the easiest to connect with, but you find ways to connect with a diverse group of people um, cause I, I know me and you connected, uh, through, through, through a Slack, right? We, we connected yeah, exactly. through, yeah, we connected through the Slack, uh, where, where, where some other, you know, professionals are that, that focus on working with athletes and stuff like that. So like if, if there's somebody out there and they're struggling to connect with other people or they might use the excuse, Oh, I'm introverted. Like, what would you say to that person? Like, what would be one tip? You're like, Hey, maybe you should try this or think about this, um, just in regards to connecting. Yeah, I'll give two quick ones. Uh, shoot your shot. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, to be honest, uh, shoot your shot because the worst that can happen is a no. And no really just means not yet. Um, mm. like, like, I don't want to be like uh, pretentious, but guys on Instagram sending DMs to girls, but they don't want to do it for like a business relationship. Mm. Like, just shoot your, shoot your shot. It's like, worst that can happen is they don't respond or they say like, not right now. But eventually, if you know, if you do it strategically, you know, you're going to get uh, you're going to get a response and then just be a value add because no one wants someone that's just going to ask for favors and ask for favors and handouts. But if you can provide value, you know, and put some effort in there, um, the chances of you connecting with somebody is uh, that much greater. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so shoot your shot and then, and then do, and then always add value. So, so, so an example of, of adding value could, could be like, for instance, like if, if somebody is out there and I mean, I'm just assuming that, that there's somebody out there and we might see them say something about financial literacy. And then you, cause I, cause I know you have blogs on your, on your site. I, I checked out the site, I checked out the links and then it's like, okay, well, I think this person could benefit from this blog and then dropping that in there. Would that, would that be a good example? Like a value add? Yeah, exactly. Like, so say, for example, like, I know I want to connect with you so I can get on your podcast so I can like share my story and, you know, get to a larger network. Before I ask about like, yo, John, can I get on your podcast? Maybe I suggest some other people that you may have not connected with that they may be good for your podcast. Or if you're writing about something like you, you mentioned, like, yo, came across this article about um, so-and-so who's becoming a speaker. I know you are a speaker as well. You should probably check them out. And then over time, you build a relationship. You do that enough times, um, whether it's like even commenting on somebody's Instagram page and like showing support. Mm. Over time, these things provide value. Like that small engagement, those small favors help, help, and will continue to, you know, build a, a, a relationship. Mm, excellent, excellent. And, and 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 thinking about thinking about speaking, I see that you you've been on the speaking circuit uh, from from what from what I see here recently. Uh, I, I was on somebody's not like you though. Day. Hey man, you know, <laughs> hey, it, hey, I mean, but I'm also not playing professional soccer either. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw you had uh, I, I saw you had, had some had some speaking engagements coming up. So so typically, like, what what is it that you really focus on when when you go and you do these speaking engagements and you know uh, people reach out to you. Uh, for, for those opportunities, like what is it that they typically want you to hit on? Yes. So for me personally, my whole, like, I guess my whole, my, my, my core is probably personal finance, money management around athletes. Um, that's like the big um, talking points. And then uh, after that would be personal development, brand management, 
um, career development um, from an athlete standpoint as well, or just even personal standpoint. And then uh, lastly, it would just be, you know, everything soccer related, you know, how I made it you know, to where I have and like the ups and downs of the professional career. But it all ties in together, but mostly because of a football athlete, it, it revolves around, you know, the, the behavior around money management, and personal finance and things like that. Talk, talk, talk a little bit about a frugal athlete a little bit more. Let, let's, let's go deep. Like, let's drive in right there. Because when I first saw the name of frugal athlete, I was like, wait, what? And I had to click the link I just like by that. the name. Thank yeah. you. That means a lot. Yeah, it's all just about by branding. the name. Yeah, yeah. So, so talk, talk. Okay, so let, let's, let's rewind and let's go to the, like, have, first of all, have you always been good at money, like managing money? I've always been good in a sense, but depending on like how good you define good, then mm-hmm. I always feel like I could be better because when I, when I first started a frugal athlete, I thought I was pretty good, but then it was like, I saw the 30 for 30 broke mm-hmm. and I was like, these are NFL NBA guys that have a lot more money and still losing their money. So I was like, okay, now I have to be great. Even though um, I was already in a good like financial standing, it's like, no, I have to double down because these guys are making a lot more money and still you know, losing it. So um, I would say I was good, but there's always stuff you can learn. I'm still learning. And that's essentially how a frugal athlete started. More of my curiosity around finding athletes that can um, be examples that I can relate to that were being good with their money. So essentially a frugal athlete is an online media platform that promotes proven financial practices and smart career decisions amongst professional athletes and student athletes. So we know that athletes are natural trendsetters, so if we can use athletes to share these stories, people will be more inclined to learn about, you know, the different tricks of the trade when it comes to, you know, uh, personal finance and money management. Wow, man. Wow. No, thank you. Dang, man. No, because I mean, like, I so I so I did like a surface level search. I, I was looking, I read, I read some of the some of the stuff on the page, but hearing you break that down that motivates me to want to go back and read a little bit more or listen a little bit more. Cause I heard on on one of the podcasts that you did, I I think you were talking about like LeBron and one of the moves LeBron made, I think it was like a few episodes or so ago, but, but now just hearing you say that it's proven practices, it's like you're, you're eliminating the guesswork for people because it's like, we have the content right here. You just have to read it and then you have to apply it. So you exactly. And you talk about LeBron and it's like people, because when I originally started, I was like, I can't really compare myself to LeBron. He's an anomaly. Mm -hmm. But if you take some of the principles that LeBron has applied to his own financial playbook, then you can easily apply it to yours. So one example is that LeBron has built a great team. You know, every every business you have like an integrator and a visionary. LeBron's the visionary. And then he has a, a teammate in Maverick Carter, his manager, who's the integrator, who's able to get in the weeds and like meet with the people because he doesn't have the time. So for me, even though I don't have a hundred, two hundred, four hundred million dollars to, you know, do that, I can do it at my scale where, okay, I have a partner that helps do the things that I am not either good at or don't have the time to do. And then I'm able to build my vision for what I want in my company, which is a frugal athlete at this current moment. Mm, Yeah. Yeah, man. I I, I really love that. Speaking, speaking about LeBron though, did did you, did you see the recent move that that KD made? Oh yeah. So we just actually posted about it. Uh, He just made 15 mil off a $1 million investment. So um, that's just, I mean, that's just a, a small scope of the, the moves athletes can make and I'm glad we're hearing more about the positive stories because usually we'd hear mm. about the, the, the stories where um, you know Kevin Durant lost this much in trying to invest in so and so so uh, with every good story there's a bad story but it's better if we can learn from the good stories you know yeah man de- definitely definitely yeah I mean I, like I like I looked up and I mean I knew that there was uh, what's it 35 ventures I think it is that's Kevin Durant's uh, firm yeah. And, and seeing that him and, and Rich Eisen, his partner, that they both were able to capitalize and both were able to win. And I'm like, man, like that's pretty, that, just like you're saying, like that's pretty amazing to see. And also because I think when people begin to see more of those positive stories and that content that, that your platform sharing and other places are sharing, then people get curious and then it flips a switch in the mind to say, I might not have as much money as KD or as LeBron, but at the same time, how can I incorporate the principles, right? How can I exactly. begin to do 
what they've done, maybe on a slightly smaller scale, you know. Exactly. So yeah, so I, I mean, I, I really, I really love that, and I really love um, just just the work that you're doing. But but talk a little bit more, because don't you haven't you created like a course, and and you're doing some other cool things uh, to make make this a make so this had, tangible yeah, for people. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Uh, sorry, uh, we've built a couple like uh, downloadables, but we're in the process of building a couple courses. So okay. um, definitely gonna have to share that with you when they go live. Um, hopefully, we'll have it in time for the upcoming school year. Um, you know, it might be virtual for everyone. So this is a unique time for us to, to you know, build them out. Um, definitely excited about that. we got a couple, uh, couple cool ones in the work. Um, but mostly we do, uh, we have a bunch of content series. Uh, one that I'm really excited about that we're currently doing is our Frugal Fundamentals, where we mm -hmm. kind of do like weekly, uh, weekly virtual workshops. So essentially it's a, a course, but it's, it's live, uh, where we talk about all different types of themes that help athletes um, from a personal finance money management standpoint. Um, it can even be about how athletes are using YouTube, how athletes are using podcasting to make money, uh, athletes at the college level doing side hustles, money management, investing, how to interview a financial advisor, just any topic that relates to athletes and money, uh, we usually are covering it. So um, that's one concept that we have in the works that we're currently doing. Um, we have the podcast as well. We have blog content, the video series, multiple video series where we try to break down different topics. So um, it's still a process, but we're excited and we're hope hopefully continue to grow. Yeah, man, de definitely, definitely. So talk talk a little bit more uh, j just about like the, the like the, about the podcast content. So what what separates your podcast content from maybe some of the like the blogs that are on your site? Because I know you all are. Like I said, you're doing some some amazing things with with the podcast content, and like I said, I saw the LeBron episode. But but talk talk a little bit more about a little bit more about that. Yeah, so the podcast network is essentially just like a deeper dive. You know, a blog you can only get so much, and you know, not everyone likes to read a lot. So, you know, while the blog is great written content, and you know, you get some instructional uh, guidelines and my, my personal thoughts or whoever the writer is personal thoughts on the current topic um, the podcast usually is a little bit deeper of dive more insight more engaging um, so within our podcast network we have three over three plus channels um, so we have bank shots where we talk about current events so for example where i'd give my insight on kevin durant going um, uh, with postmates and you know getting the bag of 15 million we have a frugal athlete where we interview current and former professional or student athletes about things that they've learned throughout their career from a money management perspective. We have money talks where we interview anyone associated with athletes and helping them achieve greater financial stability and success. So that includes financial advisors, business managers, brand, uh, social management marketers, uh, insurance agents, anyone associated with athletes and it comes to money. It can even be like a chef, how they save them money over the course of a season or whatever. Uh, we have my, personal just started series athlete entrepreneur because a lot of athletes are starting businesses so it's my pretty much like audio vlog version of just things that i'm going through thoughts insights the journey of building a company from the ground up trying to scale um, we got another one in the works uh, that we're working on a couple partners with um, but essentially like you talked off 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 record is essentially just the audio channel of all our content Excellent. Excellent, man. Yeah, I love just just hearing all of the things that you have going and even hearing the fact that you that you have a team in place uh, to be able to partner and to be able to, you know, to where you're not taking on all this because like we talked about before, you're still a professional soccer player. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So, so even, yeah. I mean, even do, how do you find time like what like what what is what does self care for you look like do, doing all of these things and having your hands all these different places? Yeah, so that's a great point. Like the first, like I made sure to focus on 2020. I was like, yo, most important thing in 2020 is find a team. So that was the biggest thing, just to delegate tasks and responsibilities. Because at, at the first couple of years, I was doing everything on my own and it affected my consistency. So I wasn't mm -hmm. able to have a podcast every week. Or I wasn't able to write consistent blogs or I wasn't able to post consistently or engage and network. So being able to have a team has helped me tremendously. And I can't thank the team enough. Adrian, Brandon, Jennifer, Kevin, Kayvon, uh, Mike, Will, uh, Jayla. There's so many others to be named. Um, but um, 
That's been so helpful. And one thing that's helped me too is just taking breaks when necessary. You know, obviously you want to grind, 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 but sometimes you have to take breaks. So I focus Sundays on like going over to my plans for the weeks and uh, focusing on like breaking it down and start instead of trying to do everything at once, breaking it down into smaller segments and focusing on, you know, one thing. If I get one thing done on Monday, all right, that's perfect. One thing done on Tuesday and just making sure you pick that one thing. And that's from the book uh, by Gary Keller. Um, other than that, uh, uh, time blocking. So I know Mondays, Mondays is when I do my newsletter and I do social content. Tuesdays is when I do podcasts. Wednesdays is when I do video content. Thursdays, I do this. Fridays, I do that. So instead of trying to figure out, like, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do? I already know. And it just streamlines the whole process. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. You, so every week, you got, it, you got it broken down like that, that tight? And you use, like, a planner or what? You use your phone? Yeah, so I got, like, a, my phone, Google Calendar, planner, notebook, sticky, sticky pads. I'm all oh, over the place. Yeah. So oh, if I didn't man. do that, I'd be all over the place. <laughs> Dang, man! Yeah, that's so that that's I, I I love it. I love it. So, so so now when when the season comes back around, right? For for mm-hmm. you to compete on the professional level, like do do things just shift, or or do you begin to delegate a little bit more, or like like talk a little bit more about that? Like, what's that like? Yeah. Yeah, it's a combination of all, all the things that you mentioned. Delegate a little bit more because my time is uh, not as uh, prevalent. Um, but to be honest, with our soccer schedule, uh, you know, we have practice uh, on a good day is from 8 to 10. Obviously, I show up early, stay a little later. So uh, let's do conservative side, 8 to 12. Then mm-hmm. I still have the whole day to kind of work. Um, so... Um, it's just maximizing my time. So instead of like watching Netflix all the time, I'm uh-huh. doing, you know, a full athlete or, you know, when we have game days, you know, we can only play uh, out of 90 minutes. So up until that, instead of like just sleeping in the bed all day, I just, you know, wake up, rest, obviously rest, but work on a blog or like set up an interview, different things like that. So it's just being smarter and more efficient with my time. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I really, I really like what, what you, and how, how long have you been playing professional soccer? 10 years now. Okay. Okay. And then how, how long is, and I know this is just a generalization, but how, 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 how much longer do you desire to play professional soccer or how long ballpark? If you could, if you had a crystal ball, you say, I'll be playing oh, okay. soccer this much longer. Oh, I mean, it really depends. Um, Cause right now I so saw my first eight years, I was in the first division in MLS. And then these last two years I've been in the second division. So I don't see myself playing in the second division that much longer, but if I get back to the first division, I'll play another two, three more years. Um, but if frugal blows up, bye. <laughs> yeah. If frugal blows up. Bye. <laughs> so we'll see. Oh man. Yeah. And, and so, so the reason I want to ask that was, because I think that now this is a new, this is a new quote unquote phenomenon with like, with, with, with professional athletes and even student athletes now taking time to develop their brand and develop businesses while they're still active in their sport versus before when, you know, like the only, the only thing you, you got like, and I'm going to say Michael Jordan, for example, only thing he had was like Gatorade and Nike while he was playing. But yeah. then after he really built the brand. So like, what, what, what do you think has really caused this shift uh, that, that's taking place here within the past, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years? Yeah, it's really crazy to see the shift. I think people are more receptive now where it's not like, oh, okay, he's doing all these things. He's not focused on his sport. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, LeBron and company have changed the, changed the whole atmosphere in terms of like, you can be more than an athlete. You know, you can do more than just play a sport and not, you know, focus on your business endeavors. And I think the realization of athletes losing their money um, because they haven't been able to transition properly or successfully Mm-hmm. Um, has has cha- changed their mind in the sense of like, okay, I need to start now because, you know, once you go pro, you're closer to the end of your career than the start of it. So understanding like soccer, uh, soccer, basketball, football, whatever sports you play, that's going to end at some point. So what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. And, and, 
Hey, and it's, cra- it's crazy to hear you say that because I, I was thinking about this like the other day. I was like, players work 10, 12, 15, however many years to get to being pro. And then <laughs> when they make it pro, they have all these pre existing injuries. They have this much treatment that they have to put in. And then now you finally get the opportunity to shine. And some people, like you said, you you have a ten career, ten year career thus far. But some people it might be two, three, maybe five years. Yeah. And it's it's just mind blowing. You worked your whole life since you were five years old to only play like two years of professional soccer. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Man, it it, it it hurts my heart, but I'm but I'm really hopeful and really excited because there's people like you, uh, like you said before, you're focusing on financial literacy and educating this next generation, equipping them for 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 what's next. So, why is it that 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 you're so driven to to assist like student athletes? Like I understand professional, but but why student athletes as well? Like why are they in that bunch? Why do they matter to you? Uh, for me, I mean, I've always been a student of life, um, so. Uh, student athletes, you're at that age where you're not, you don't have the money yet. So if you can get the behavior changed beforehand, because it's harder to reach somebody when they already have the money and you're like trying to tell them like, this is what you need to do with your money, or this is the mindset that you need to have, because it's like, it's hard to tell someone with a million in their bank account, like, you know, budget because they see all this money. But when you have a student athlete that can, you know, kind of be more receptive, uh, more curious in the sense of asking questions and understanding like the unique position that they're in because student athletes, not all of them are going to go pro, but they can use the capital and they can use the leverage of the resources that they have to have a successful life um, outside of sports or within sports, maybe not on the field, but within sports business. So, uh, and especially as the rules change uh, with NIL coming into play, um, it's going to be more, more important now more than ever to, to get to, to get to the babies as people like to call them definitely definitely man yeah the, the nil I, I still need a little bit more information on it i mean i've, I've heard different panels on and i've heard some uh thoughts but i just need to get a little bit more information to just see how they're really going to allow these student athletes to to leverage their their brand but yeah everyone even though, needs to get i feel like it's a wild wild west everyone's like people are trying to be first to market to understand it but no one really knows what's going to happen <laughs> Yeah, that's the, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying, because I, I mean, I think everything's great in like in the idea or the concept or the vision stage. But then when money actually is put on the table, then it's like, OK, well, we did say this, but we're going to change this rule here. Or yeah. change this rule. So, I mean, we're, 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 we're going to see. We're going to see. But uh, but before we get to the two minute drill, I want to ask you this one last question, because we, we were talking about uh, NIL and and just understanding like that you also. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, branding and things like that because I've, I've seen you leverage your platform really well I, I like your grid on your Instagram you know you got your, <laughs> you had the quotes and, and and all that good stuff uh, but talk talk about for a student athlete out there like, like talk about the importance of them learning to leverage like their social media or their brand or creating one yeah it's important because uh, especially with social media because that's like people's first impression. Everyone says, don't judge a book by its cover, but that's going to happen. So <laughs> you might as well make, you know, might as well make the cover at least somewhat appealing to, mm-hmm. to begin with. And, you know, social media can make or break your career before it even starts. You know, if you Ooh. tweet the wrong, the wrong thing, or if you post in a little uh, too raunchy for, depending on who you're working with. Um, and especially as a student athlete, you're a representative and an ambassador of your community, your school, your alumni, so it's important to represent yourself to the best of your abilities. So I would say, you know, social media branding is very important. And like, you're not supposed to care what people think, but you still want to present yourself in the right way and present yourself in the way where people can't make assumptions about what you want your character to be. You put that out there, you control that. So control your narrative, control your story, control your brand, and you'll be better for it in the long run. <laughs> that that little sentence right there at the end you just hit it you just hit it right there control your story control your narrative and control your brand and you wow that's good that was that was good Amobi, that was good that was really good right there if you make it into a clip send it to me please yeah 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 i'm, I'm, I'm gonna get you a clip i'm gonna get you a clip and we'll cut that one specifically just for you but uh, uh now so now we're gonna go ahead and get into the two-minute drill man this has really been this has really been a uh, rich conversation. 
uh, definitely appreciate you taking the time to come on and, and, and share uh, because I know that I, I really believe in what you're doing with the financial literacy piece. And I know that more people need to be introduced to it because I'm, I, you know, I, I, I'm out of college now, what, 10 years, and I wish that I knew you before. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm, I, I, but we're getting it figured out now. So. Yeah, we, we connected at the right time. Yeah, yeah, man. Def, definitely, definitely. But now, I'm over, we're about to go ahead and get into the, we're about to go ahead and get into the two minute drill. So are you ready? Born ready. Stay ready. So you never have to get ready. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Here we go. Favorite food? Oh, Nigerian food. Jello Price Plantain is chicken. Ooh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That last book you read? Last book I read was um, Kobe Bryant Mama Mentality. Currently reading 50th Power by 50 Saint Robert. I need, I need to check that out. What, 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 what's your favorite Netflix show? Oh, damn, that's pretty good. All time favorite Netflix show currently or like currently? We'll go time. current. We'll go current. Currently, damn, the show's been kind of dry. I mean, I rewatched Top Boy. That counts. What show? Top Boy. Top, um, top Boy. Top Boy Summer House. Top Boy. Um, oh. The one that Drake re, re, uh, rebought. It's an oh. English show. I'm big on like uh, mafia and mob game. Oh, okay. I'm going to check so, that out. It's like okay. an England. Game show. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Favorite favorite podcast? Man, there's so many. Uh, let me. Just, I'm, gonna just, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just start naming some. Uh, Earn Your Leisure podcast. Uh, that's a game changer. Business Wars. How I Built This. The Frugal Athlete Podcast Network. The Only Ball Podcast. Uh, Players Point. Court to Corporate. Side Side Hustle Income uh, um, Podcast. I mean, it keeps going. Dave Ramsey. Oh uh, my goodness. Oh, I need to get back to Dave Ramsey podcast. Oh my goodness. So there's sometimes you go to like to go through phases of different podcasts. Half Win, uh, Entrepreneurs on Fire, um, uh, The Grind is Ugly. My homeboy does that podcast. Uh, Pass the Remote. That's me and my brother's movie and TV show podcast. So, like, yeah, this. The thing is, there's some the online course show. I can keep going and going. Like, oh I have my goodness. Whole roll of decks and podcasts. Wow. I, okay, I'm, I'm going to get with you offline just to see what's in your podcast uh, library. Um, and then uh, what, what's, what's one financial tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Uh, one financial tip for a student athlete specifically would be compound interest. You know, so don't think mm -hmm. like short term, think long term because you're at a unique age, 18 to 22. Whether you're making money, whether you're saving money, understand that compound interest you're going to be better for it in the long term. There's so many different strategies in terms of like, you know, pay yourself first, budget, save, invest. But if you can understand the concept of compound interest and understanding the fact that, you know, you're playing the long, long game, so you'll be better for it the long, the long run because the earlier you start, the better you off uh, long term. There it is. There it is. Now, now, uh, Moby, I want you to go ahead and let everybody know where they can find you, where they can follow you and where they can connect with you. Now, nah, then once again, thank you so much for having me on. But uh, you can find me at a frugal athlete on Instagram, Twitter, or at a Moby says Instagram, Twitter, respond within 48 hours. That's a promise. Uh, websites www.afrugalathlete.com or www.amobiokugo.com. On LinkedIn, Amobiokugo. Um, that's pretty much it. Or you can find me on our Slack group. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. But yeah, uh, so I, I'm going I'm to get all that down in the show notes. Man, I, I definitely appreciate you coming on, dropping the gems, dropping the nuggets, dropping the golden tickets for everybody to pick up. Uh, but man, if I could be a resource to you in any way, you already know, let, let me know. And dang, since you ride the road, I might have to check out a soccer game, man. Me and my wife yeah, might have to check out a soccer game. Most definitely. I definitely want to run it back, man. I got to get you on the podcast as well. Hey, man, let, let, me, let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely available. But uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and cut this one out. But, brother, I def definitely appreciate you. And everybody uh, who's out there who's listening to all the ballers, definitely encourage you to connect. We're going to have all, all of Amobi's information down there at the bottom in the show notes. And then also listen, rate, and review his podcast. And feel free to leave us a helpful review as well. I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond Ball. Beyond Ball.